Good morning, you guys. Good morning. I do not know, honestly, um, truly, guys, who I'm doing this video for, but I've been feeling the pull for the last couple of days, and I wasn't going to come back on until November 1st, like the Lord had told me originally, but he just keep telling me, come in this car and record this video, although I'm out, you guys. God is good. I just feel led to release what he's put on my spirit to release. And I want to just be obedient and do that. I do not want to quench the Holy Spirit. Because I've learned that you have to be open over the years to what God said. But you also have to be open to what he's saying. I don't just tell y'all that. I try to live by that as well. So I want to release this word. And then I'm going to hop up off of here. I'm going to read um, again Isaiah 54 and Leviticus 26. But I've just been feeling this on my heart for somebody. The Lord is saying continue to trust him continue to wait on him continue to seek him continue to press continue to praise it's not in vain and you know there's just been so many different downloads and signs so much so that i haven't even had a chance to really write all of them down but whatever the lord lead me to share i want to share on this i did see a truck this morning that said clearly okay so once i dropped the kids to school and before after i dropped them to school i had to go back to the house because i forgot something so i dropped them then i went to the house and got it and now i'm at this place um doing what i need to do before i get back on the road go somewhere else and then you know i just continue to go about my day but i feel like the lord allowed me to um go back and get my purse for a reason because i never forget my purse ever i never forget it or whatever i always have it on me my purse or my wallet something but this morning i forgot it or whatever um and when i came back this way coming here to where i was i saw so many different signs and the lord kept highlighting to me the stop sign for someone and he kept saying stop 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 now i passed this stop sign you know a lot it's not unusual for me i've been passing this stop sign for over three years or whatever when i come this way and the lord highlighted that same stop sign and that resident um not that residential building it's a commercial building but it's a residential area but it's a commercial building like on that side and it, it has a stop sign right there and he said look at that stop sign and i'm going straight you know coming this way he said look at that stop sign and i was looking at the stop sign i saw clearly today i'm um, on the truck it said clearly air condition or something but that stood out to me in the stop sign and the lord was saying for someone you need to stop like you need to stop and then i'm like okay father god is you speaking to me and he was like no he was like listen to what i'm telling you basically he was just downloaded to me to give to you guys he was like this is a word for someone you need to stop like the pace you're going whether it be through worry or anxiety the lord is saying stop you know and then with these drivers here as i took 95 coming back or whatever and you know it'd be really lit early in the morning as people be zooming out i'm talking about going well over 100 150 miles per hour when the speed limit is 65 miles per hour you know and the lord was just reminding me of that the clearly thing the stop sign and just these different things and the lord is saying for someone you need to stop stop pacing so much in your mind he don't want you worried about that he don't want you anxious the lord also said to me for someone he said stop i'm giving you the answers so your answer may be have peace your answer may be i need to trust god your answer may be be still and he showed me you know like when you when you are in school and everything whether it's college or high school or whatever you know and you're getting ready um to take a test a lot of times the teacher and we talked about this multiple times before but a lot of times the teacher will not say anything they will be they will be quiet because they have um you know prepared you enough for this and you should know it and they really want to see what you know they really they really want to see if you have been paying attention or not they want to see what you know they want to see you put your best foot forward you know and what you get on the test whether you pass or fail it just goes to show if you've been paying attention it just, it just goes to show what you remember and the lord is saying that in this season there, there were times in certain seasons where he was being quiet in certain seasons because he had already given you the word and he wanted you to go forward in the word that he had gave you some of you were like well god you know I'm, I'm on this path and I feel like I really can't hear you he, he because he's saying you on a good path you are already moving in what I gave you to do you know some of you he got to continue to constantly speak to you or build you up to um keep you encouraged to keep you on his path but the Lord said to me this morning for someone he said you need to stop and you need to listen because the Lord is actually giving you the answers some of you are looking over here and you're looking over there and you're looking over here and you're looking over there and you know um look this truck just passed in see the lord is speaking 
Some of you are looking over here and you're looking over there and the Lord is saying you need to stop. You need to relax. You need to pace yourself. The Lord is saying, I am giving you the answers. Not talking about me, Rakira Ramsey. He's it's giving you the answers. So your bubble may be in, you need to tr bubble in trust. You need to bubble in patience. The Lord said you need to bubble in belief. You need to bubble in faith. And the Lord had gave me a word this morning on faith. I'm going to ask him to bring it back to my remembrance. He gave it to me when I was actually getting on 95. But the Lord is speaking that word for somebody. The Lord is saying he is giving you the answers. Many of you are not taking heed. And you know when a teacher that's going to grade your paper and going to have the ability to pass you or not, when a teacher give you the answers, everybody love when the teacher give them the answers because that is something that you don't have to figure out. That, that is a given when that teacher give you that bonus point or that answer, or that bonus credit. So the Lord is speaking this morning. The Lord is saying, I'm giving my people the answers. Many of you are not listening to him. Like this, see this person that just literally ran through a red light. Many of you are not listening to him. Just like that, that minivan that just passed through that red light. And this is a busy area. The Lord is saying you need to stop. This could be in a relationship. The Lord is saying, stop. Listen to me take heed this can be a friendship this could be a relationship whatever this is not a word for everybody this part but it is a word for at least one the lord is saying stop listen to me take heed acknowledge me what am i saying on this situation this could be financially if god is telling you to save or invest or spend or whatever he's asking you to do the lord is saying you need to stop because i feel like this has to do like with almost proverbs 3 5 through 6 you, you kind of can lean on your own understanding but the lord is saying no don't lean on your own understanding even if it looks sweet i'm telling you even if it look good the lord is i kept highlighting that stop sign to me and he kept the crazy thing was he kept cascading the stop sign he kept cascading it in the spirit realm to me. I had already done passed the stop sign. I'm about to be getting on this light. And the Lord kept cascading that stop sign to me. And the Lord said, stop, 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 stop. And he put that strong in my spirit. And he is saying that for someone. Stop, 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 stop. Now I asked him if that word was for me. And he said, no, that was not for me. He had already given me a word, but I want to release that for somebody. You need to stop and pray. You need to stop and praise. You need to stop and seek the Lord. You need to stop and inquire of him. Many of you, you are going based off the, okay, this is the route that I think is best. And Father God, I know you are with me. I'm, I'm asking you to bless this route, God. I know you are blessing me, Father God. I know I'm not doing thing, anything out of your will, but the Lord is saying, if you will just stop and seek him, he will give you a better direction. If you will just stop and seek him, he will give you the best direction. You think you got to go through A, B, C, D, and E, to get to F, but the Lord is saying, son, daughter, if you would just seek me on this, if you would just press in in your prayers or prayer worship, if you would just quiet yourself, if you would just stop for just a minute, literally, or a few minutes, I can tell you that I already took care of you from getting from A to get to F. You don't have to go through the other letters to get there. The Lord is saying, stop. The Lord is saying, pay attention. He's not even saying caution. The Lord says, stop. That means you need to slow down. This could be mentally. This could be emotionally. The Lord is saying your pace. The Lord is saying, stop, stop. And he reminded me of the word that he had me to release to you guys on Saturday. Talking about it is in him. It's in him. You know, whatever you need is in him. It's found in his word. It's found in his will. It's found in his way. It is found in his presence. The Lord is saying, stop. The Lord is saying, stop. The Lord is saying for someone, you need to pay attention to the signs. You need to pay attention to the red flag. You may want them to be that for you, but that is not, that is not, that is not said Father God. The Lord is saying, stop. And the Lord is giving you so many um, signs before you even get deep into it. Some of you, you know, you are ready to move. I'm feeling this for somebody so strong. Some of you, you're so ready to move from where God is, um, from, from where you are. And you know, God is telling you to get up and relocate. But this place that you're about to move into, whether this be uh, commercially or residentially for like a relocation, the Lord is putting in your spirit. Do not sign that lease yet. 
He's saying, stop. That is not what he has for you. Don't settle because you're going through some discomfort. Don't settle because I just need to get something out because you don't want to find yourself getting out of one thing and one warfare just to go into something worse. The Lord is saying, what I have for you, I have for you. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he adds no sorrow with it. And the Lord is also saying for someone that is not your husband. That's not your husband. They are not after you for you. The Lord said they are after you for the glory. I'm seeing them almost like a spiritual vampire. That word is not for everybody. That word is for a woman on here. This is a major life decision. The Lord said no. The Lord said no. He's, he's showing me them as a spiritual vampire. And the Lord is saying that is not what he have for you. Now, if you choose to settle and be with that person, the Lord will bless you. But you will go through a lot of warfare and your life will not rise above average. They want the glory of God in you. They can see it on you. They can feel it in you. Even times when you may be feeling at your lowest and you may be feeling like this is not my best day. I'm not putting my best foot forward. But baby, that glory is all over you. God's glory is all over you. And they can see that. It's almost like Joseph's brother. And they can see that. And Father God said, they are not after you. He told me this this morning in my spirit. He said, they are not after you. He said, they are after my glory in you. Your father and their father is two totally different fathers, two totally different kingdoms. You serving and believing and worshiping the most high God, Father God, the kingdom of light. And their father is of the devil. Yeah, they know how to speak the church lingo and the church language and make you laugh and make you happy. And yeah, they haven't crossed any boundaries. And yeah, they seem like the perfect gentleman they seem like. But God has been showing you dreams and showing you things like you need to stop and pump the brakes with this man. You, you rushing in because you're getting the attention. You're rushing in because of all the heart things and heartbreaks and things that you went through. And it's just feel good. And he just seemed nice. And he just seemed better to me than what I've had in a long time. And the Lord is saying, you need to stop and you need to pump the brakes. That is not what he have for you. Y'all are serving two different people. This person to me is almost like an angel of light. You know, and the Lord is saying, no. He's saying, no, you need to stop. The Lord said, no, you need to stop. You need to stop. Excuse me, you guys. I haven't had breakfast yet. The Lord is saying, no, you need to stop. You need to stop and pay attention. This is someone even with school. You've been asking God, what is the direction for school, for your education? The Lord is saying, stop, wait, come to him. He'll show you which school because you have so many options and you don't want to go based off people you guys you don't want to go based off people or peer pressure i'm even seeing these schools emailing you you getting offers left or right the lord is saying stop stop could be stillness stop can be quiet stop can be humble yourself stop could be be quiet get still so you can hear what he want to say to you i'm going to say something to you guys yesterday's anointing was for yesterday the anointing that god had for you for today is for today yesterday's grace and mercy was for yesterday the grace and mercy that God have for you today is today. The new sound that you're going to give God is for today. Whatever it was for yesterday was for yesterday to lead to today. And whatever you're going to do today, is going to lead you into your tomorrow. But you have to have an ear to hear like Abraham. Guys, we talked about this in the book of Genesis. The Lord, he heard the Lord clearly tell him to go sacrifice your son. We did series on that. And he, he did. He was obedient. He was obedient. But God provided a realm in the bush. He had to have an ear to have heard what God told him to do and an ear to hear what God is saying. Because see, God speaks. He spoke, but he's speaking in the now and he will speak in the future. God is constantly, you guys, speaking. He's very present. He's very present. But the Lord is saying that for someone. Stop. Won't you slow down and pay attention? The Lord is even saying for someone, stop and smell the roses. Won't you just stop and smell the roses? Stop and smell the roses. The Lord is saying for someone, the simple things, they matter too. The simple things matter in life. Take, take, don't, don't take advantage of what he give you, whether it be big or small. God is saying, stop and smell the roses. Life is too short and he wants you to enjoy your life. We already have a lot to deal with in this life. Don't make things harder on yourself, you guys. If you can enjoy your family, enjoy your family. If you can stop and smell the roses, that's what you need to do. But the Lord is saying stop. Even for someone I'm seeing you are worried about your grown sons on here. The Lord is saying stop. Wasn't I with them before I even put them in your womb? Wasn't I with them and with you 
when they were in your womb through your pregnancies? Wasn't I with you? This is a word for a woman of God on here. Wasn't I with you when they were little, when you didn't know how sometimes things was going to work out? Wasn't I with you in the midst of good and bad through the relocations? Why would I not be with them now? The Lord love your children more than you love them. The Lord love our children more than we do. The Lord is saying, stop whatever this means for you. And for some of you, it don't have to be a bad thing. It could just be you need to calm down. You need to trust God. You need to stop. So let us pray. Then I'm going to read them scriptures and then I do have to go. Glory to God. But God is saying you need to stop. Pay attention to the signs because the thing about it is after a red light a green light is coming so once you get your clearance from god once you get your direction from god or what he's asking you to do in this day in this week in this time in this season in this hour spiritually and naturally the green light literally this light just turned green as i'm even saying this the green light is coming after the red light so god that means god is preparing you for your access for your yes for your goal for your moving forward but you don't want to move ahead of him just like we talked about in Ezekiel chapter one with them living creatures. They are them living creatures. Guys was all in sync. They were all on one accord. The Lord is even saying for someone, you need to stop the thoughts in your mind. You need to speak to it. You got to renew your mind. Romans 12, one through three. We did a series on that. The Lord is saying you are in control of your thoughts. You are in control. The Lord is saying that, that your pace, it has to slow down. You guys. Because nobody in their right mind with common sense is just going to be constantly running through red lights, constantly running through red lights. Eventually, they're going to get what they're looking for or what they're not looking for. And that is going to cause detrimental damage to not just them, but other people. And the Lord is saying that for somebody. This is your destiny. This is your life. It doesn't matter if it's like a big or small decision. We know split second decisions make a major difference it could change a person whole life and lifetime so please take heed to that what god is saying to you okay i'm going to pray really quick and i'm going to give you guys the scriptures heavenly father in the mighty name of jesus father god i don't know who this video was for but father god i thank you that you know and i thank you god that you are giving them the grace to stop to seek you, Father, to, to whatever you're speaking to their spirit, Father God, in any area of life. I just thank you, Father God, that they will stop. The, even the Lord is saying for someone on here, you need to rest. You don't want a hospital bed to have to rest you. You don't want your body to have to be broken down in order for you to get that you need to rest. Take heed and rest. Life is going to continue on. I know there are a lot of burdens and responsibilities on you and God is going to grace you, but you don't want to be running on fumes because if you are not good for you, you cannot be good for anybody. And the Lord is saying you need to rest, rest your mind, rest your soul, rest your emotions, rest your body, get you some rest. This is going to make you better. This is going to help you. Thank you, Father. I just thank you for touching your people on this morning, Father God. I just thank you for touching the body of Christ at large, those that need to be saved. Touch the people and persons listening to this, their family, friends, and loved ones, Father God. Touch every area of their life. Touch their souls, their spirits, their bodies. Touch their finances. Touch their ministry. Touch their children. Touch their family, Father God. Touch their relationship. Touch their, Father God, gifts and talents, Father God. Touch their, Father God, um, spirit man deeper, God. Every area of their life, Father God, physically, God, every area. May you touch on the north south east and west god we even pray father god this morning for the persecuted church father god and for those that are going through and believing you father god you are the god of the encore you are the god father god of the breakthrough father god you are the almighty god father god and i just thank you for great things that you are doing in the lives of your people in every area of their life father god i thank you for doing something new I thank you for doing something clean, Father God. I thank you for doing something fresh. I thank you for refreshment, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, I just release your blessings over your people, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you this morning, Father God. We give you praise, Father God. We give you glory, God. We thank you, Father God, for all that you have done, God. We thank you, God, for all that you will do. And we thank you, Father God, for, Father God, what you are presently doing, Father God. You are amazing, God, and we thank you, Father God.
We love you, Father God. We lift you up, Father God. We cry out holy to you, Father God. We cry, have your way, Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that we are going deeper in your glory, Father God. We are swimming in your glory, God. We are basking in your presence, God. What we need is in you, Father God. Hallelujah. The God, this is a, this is a word for somebody. The God that carried you through before is carrying you through again. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying he wants to take you to new levels and new heights and new dimensions. Glory to God. God is coming through for you. Come on, somebody release that. Say, Ereshire Rusu Neribirande Beriso Kori Shatabai Ranberiso Tobo. Hallelujah. Somebody release that. Say, God is coming through for me. God is coming through for me. Hallelujah. The God that gave you the promise is God enough to fulfill the promise. God and His word go hand in hand. God and His word are one. Hallelujah. God put his word above his name. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is sent for someone. You need to pull out them visions and them goals and them dreams. And you need to speak life over it. I feel the Holy Spirit. He is saying you need to speak life over those things. The Lord is sent for someone. Speak life over it. Speak life. Pull out them journals. Pull out them affirmations. Pull out them visions and dreams and goals. The Lord is saying you need to speak life over it. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying for someone, don't take the bait. I don't know what that means for you, but the Lord is saying, don't take the bait. Don't take the bait. You about to face a situation or you in a situation where bait is going to be before you and it's going to look appealing like you can take it. And Father God saying, no, don't take the bait. I just saw in the spirit realm, a goldfish inside of a goldfish bowl. And I saw a bait coming before him, but he didn't, he only saw the food. He didn't see the hook. And, if, and he is it's, it's close enough to him, but it's not too close. So God is sending forth protection and warning and giving you instruction as to what to do. That means you have a choice to take this bait or not, because it's not right before this goldfish mouth that I'm seeing in the spirit, but it's not too far away. It's right there, but it's not there. Don't take the bait. The Lord is saying that for someone. Do not take the bait. Don't take the bait. It could be a person that's disguised as one way and coming another way. It could be your flesh. It could be God is building you up more in the spirit. Don't take the bait. Don't, don't, do not do it. Don't take the bait in the name of Jesus. Let's read these scriptures. I'm going to read Ezekiel 33 verses 1 through 9, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, Isaiah 54. And then it was another one I'm supposed to read to you guys. He'll bring it back. The Lord is also saying for someone, he said, tell my people I love them. Tell them I love them. Okay, let me give y'all this. Um, Ezekiel 33, verses 1 through 9. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if, he's, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, we have an entire Ezekiel series, but I'm just reading these verses because the Lord is saying this for somebody this morning. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then who the Lord is sent for someone take me at my word, not me. He's saying himself. The Lord is sent for someone take him at his word. The Lord is sent for someone take me at my word. Take me at my word. Let me tell you something by Father God. When Father God get a word, it's done. It's already done. Before he even gave it to you, it's already done because he is I am that I am. It's already done. It's already done. It is already done. Before he gave it to you, it was already done. It just has to catch up physically for what the spirit, but in the spirit realm, it's already done. Father God is saying that for someone, take me at my word. This is a word for all of you. Take me at my word. 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 Me at my word. I'm seeing in the spirit a check. And you know, when you sign the back of the check and you go to the bank, you know, depending on who gave you that check, you're going to be able to see if you're going to be able to get that or not or whatever. But God is saying, no, before I gave it to you, it was already done. God is saying, you can't, you don't even got to take it to the bank. God is bigger and better than any bank. Father God said, take me at my word, period. That is the vibe. That is the word this morning. Father God said, take me at my word. Take me at my word, son, daughter. Just take me at my word. That's your assignment. Take me at my word. You want to keep, you keep asking God, God, what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And I see you just looking around, looking around, looking around. Do I need to fast more? Do I need to pray? Do I need to worship? Do I need to do this? Father God say, no, right now, what I need you to do is just take me at my word. That's it right there. That's what's pleasing to me. You take me at my word. That's your faith, your belief. 
Don't let nobody cover your faith and your belief. Don't let nobody cover your vision and goals and dreams and what God gave you. God gave it to you for a reason. So the God that gave it to you shall fulfill it through you. He who began the good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is sent for somebody. Take him at his word. Don't play with his word. Anything that God give you, whether it seem big or small, God do not waste his words. God do not waste his breath. God do not waste his glory. When he give it to you, that's what it is. God is not a man that he should change his mind. He, God don't have to repent and change his mind like we do. No, when God said it is so. The Lord is saying for somebody, take him at his word, period. Because you're trying to do this and this and that. And those are some good things. But God is saying, you know what I really, really want you to do for real, for real? Just take me at my word, period. Just take me at my word and put a period on it. Because when you put a period on it, that's it. That means the sentence is complete. You can begin a new sentence. But once you put that period on it, that's it for that. Period. The Lord is saying, take me at my word, period. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's going deeper in the glory today. Thank you, Jesus. You're going deeper in the glory today. You're going deeper in the glory of your life. God is going to do what he has promised you. Come on, somebody release that. Say, God is going to do what he has promised me. I need you to release that out this morning. God is going to do what he has promised me. God is going to do what he has promised me. Come on, come on. He good for it. God is going to do what he has promised me. Thank you, Jesus. Glory today. Come on. God is going to do what he has promised me. And I need you to put a praise on that. And I need you to thank God for that. And whatever way you're going to do it, praise him because it is already done, period, in Jesus' name. Okay. If when he see the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever hear the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. The Lord is sent for somebody that he is healing your stomach. He's healing your womb. That blood issue that you've been having, God is clearing that up and he is healing you in the name of Jesus. Woo, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. And when he see the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever, thank you, Father God, hear the sound of the trumpet. And the Lord said, sound of rain is coming in the life of somebody. Receive that and take it not warning. If the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own hand. The Lord had, the Lord is sent for someone. I see him. He is taking your hand and he is pulling you up. The Lord is taking your hand and pulling you up. The Lord said, uh-uh, you come on with me. He pulling you up, honey. He is pulling you up. The Lord is taking your hand and pulling you up and saying, no, you coming up out of this. I'm pulling you up with me. Come on, you going to walk with me. Come on, let's go. Them kids in the store, you know, they when they see something they want and you're like, uh-uh, we not getting that. And sometimes you got to take them by the hand and kind of gently nudge them. But I ain't seeing the Lord gently nudge you this morning. The Lord is pulling you up, but he pulling you up out of love. The Lord is saying, uh-uh, you ain't going to give up here. This is not all I have for you. You think, come on. Oh, honey, you think I allowed you to go through all of that just so you can be here and that's it? The devil is a liar. The Lord says he's pulling you up. There's more to you. There's more to your story than this. There is more. Somebody say there is more to me than what you see, honey. Hallelujah. Somebody release that out. There is more to me than what you see. This is a word for someone. There is more to me than what you think you see. Somebody release that out. Then whosoever hears the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning. Thank you, Father. I hear you, Father. Their airplane, I don't know if y'all can hear it. Hallelujah. And taketh not warning of the sword come and take him away. His blood shall be upon his own head. The Lord is sent for someone, fret not. Fret not. The Lord is sent for someone, fret not. Fret not. Fret not. Fret not. Fret not. In the name of Jesus. Woof. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet. If I don't get a chance to get to these other scriptures, y'all read them, please. Whatever I reference in the video. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them. The Lord is saying for someone, you need to get up and go. You need to get up and go. Stop over spiritualizing this. 
You already got the faith for it. The Lord saying you need to physically get up and go. The Lord said you need to get up and go. You over spiritualizing this so that you don't go. But God is saying, no, you need to get up and go. Because what you need is on the other side of this, period. Ooh, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. The Lord is also saying for someone, pack up and be ready. We talked about this before, preparation. I can't tell you how many videos we have on it. But the Lord is saying, if when the blessing come to you or what he about to do for you, and you come and saying, oh, I got to get ready, then you ain't ready. You need to be ready. It's better to be ready than, than to have to get prepared and you ain't prepared. It's better to already be prepared and be ready so when it come, you are really ready. Mm. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he has taken away his iniquity. But his blood will I require the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, somebody say this, what God has for me is for me. Who God has for me is for me, period. And you got to be in agreement with the word of God and be in agreement with God. Ooh. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, the Lord is sent for somebody to be instant in season and out of season. That wicked man shall die his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God in Jesus' name, amen. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. He's going to direct your paths as you acknowledge him. Mm. Thank you, Jesus, this morning. God, we thank you, Father God, in advance. Isaiah 54. This thing may cut off, but I'm going to read what I can. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break it forth into singing, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, come on, and let them scratch forth the curtains of thy inhabitations. Spare not, lengthen thy course, and strengthen thy states. The Lord has sent for somebody, I am going to do it. He said that loud and bold in my right ear, I am going to do it. For thou shalt break forth. It's big and bold. I'm going to do it. For thou shalt break forth. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. On the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not.